Amid the gunshots and bomb blasts, hundreds of students ran for their lives, stalked in their own school by two of their own classmates who went on a ramp. You, you, you are the change. You could make the change. And don't wait saying, well, my time is going to be when I'm this age, I'm this. That age may never come. Why not change the world now? Because the, the world, the future is theirs. It starts with them. Well, my name's Frank DeAngelis, uh, better known as Mr. D. And uh, just very happy to share my story. So I started my career at Columbine back in 1979 and got my principal's job in 1996 and life was just perfect. And I was, I was at the place, it was my second family, I'd spent 20 years there. Everything was going extremely well and then all of a sudden, April 20th, 1999 comes around. And it's a day in which my life changed forever. It was a beautiful Colorado spring day. One of the things I love about Colorado is the sunshine that we have most of the time. And Every morning I'd get to Columbine early. Every morning Dave Sanders would come by and we'd have a cup of coffee and we'd talk. That day, that conversation didn't happen. And so all of a sudden I'm getting ready to go to school. I get to school late. And Kiki Leba was a student teacher at Columbine and he was on a one-year contract and we interviewed him. Fantastic teacher. And so I was gonna get ready to hire him and offer him the job and give him welcome to the rebel family, the Columbine family. So we sit in my office and all of a sudden we sit down in my secretary and to this day, I don't know if I ever offered Kiki a job, but he's still working at Columbine. And the reason I don't know is all of a sudden we're sitting down and my secretary runs towards my door and had a little glass window on it and her face plan, I knew something was wrong and she said, Frank, there's been a report of gunfire. And I couldn't fathom what she was stating because I had been there for 20 years. I can count on two hands the number of fist fights we had at Columbine. So the first thing that crossed my mind is this has to be a senior prank. This can't be happening at this school. It was, it was a fantastic place. And then I ran out of my office and my worst nightmare became a reality. And you know, you can't determine what happens to us, but you can determine how you respond. And I think that's what this generation needs to do, that they can't say until our time, their time is now. If they don't like what's going on right now, then they need to be the leaders. April 20th, 1999 was the worst day of my life. I got a phone call from my wife saying that there had been a shooting at the school and uh, that several children had been shot and killed. And when you have to hope that your child has been wounded and in a hospital, that's the best hope we had. And uh, there was nothing. It's a process, it's not a one-time thing to forgive, but our family did choose that route. So when the shooting happened, I was 17 and a, a junior at Columbine. And so I had to return to my senior year and complete that to the best of my ability, resume a sense of normalcy, and the year and the experience was anything but normal. But the two conclusions that I, that I really came out of that experience with and, and have continued to live by were one, get busy living. And the second conclusion was love hard. I guess it goes back to Columbine, doesn't it? That it was the boys raised in that neighborhood who didn't feel like they had any sense of power. Students need to feel that empowerment. They need to feel that sense of, I have a voice and my voice matters. So the poster behind us um, is our Why We Wear White poster and on it every year we update the school shootings that have happened every year so it's actually a really sad poster just because it is so big and we're hoping that year after year we don't have to update it but sadly we do. No amount of laws can stop someone who spends months of planning this type of massacre. The real villain lies within our own hearts. Political posturing and restrictive legislation are not the answers. The young people of our nation hold the key, and there is a spiritual awakening that's taking place that will not be squelched. My daughter's death will not be in vain. The young people of this country will not allow that to happen. And remember that even a pawn and a master's hand can accomplish much. 
So Day Without Hate began in 2007, in April, um, just right after the school shooting at Virginia Tech. Our teacher, Ben, asked us what's happening in the world. We decided to go ahead and build the perfect day. The day that we all wanted, but we didn't know existed. I said, okay, well, if you're serious, come after school. Let's come up with a plan about what we want to do. So we took the ideas of what if we can actually turn something like that into a positive. But what if, what if we just tried in our school, let's have a day without hate? What if we tried to really bring everybody together? What if there's one day we're not allowed to hate? If there's one day just built around love, and that's the only option. So every year we celebrate Day Without Hate, which is a day where we celebrate peace and nonviolence. When kids walk into our school on Day Without Hate, their faces just completely light up and change. It's just a complete 360, and I think this year especially, it was really important to see that change. The biggest part of Day Without Hate for the Dakota Ridge community is coming together as a community in order to promote peace, be able to influence kids and people's lives, to be able to really promote those values that I hold so near and dear to myself. I think that what the kids are doing and what we're trying to do with Day Without Hate is to spread hope to other schools, to communities, to students who might feel disconnected. Because all of our themes, whatever they may be, have been about spreading hope. No matter who you are and no matter your situation, everybody can always use more positivity in their lives. Peace, love, and positivity. <laughs> That's what it's about. Knowing how much it changes people in our school, I think can bring so much positive things to our nation and our state. There's a shared responsibility in raising up this next generation, I think. Knowing that, that you're not alone and that you know, maybe what you think in your mind, where you maybe should be at in your healing journey, can be debunked. Because like, no matter where you're at, everyone has a different experience and it's not linear. I think that people have been always looking for that deep connection versus a surface level connection. What we are missing is a preventative approach to mental health care. Let's figure out a model where kids, adults, whomever, are already going to a space where they know that the help is available if they need it. I think we can support kids and love them better by supporting them through action. A day without hate would just look like getting back to our purest form. You know, when we just, all of those pains and wounds and insecurities kind of left our body and we were able to just love each other in the purest form, which is a heart-to-heart -heart level, beyond anything that we can see in the physical. We are at Carmody Middle School today. This has been on my calendar for a really, really long time. Today is uh, a day without hate. I think it starts with hope, right? Because hope is what if it could get better. That's where Day With My Hate started, was hope. And so giving the students the responsibility to change your school, to make it better. That's really what it is, it's simple. And so it's programs like A Day Without Hate. I see so much potential and so much love, and that's what our world needs right now. In 14 years, we've been implemented in 35 plus states, five countries, and thanks to our students, we've been proclamated by the state of Colorado for over a decade. It is a grassroots movement, and that's the magic, right? This idea of a day without hate where everyone is together and we all talk to people we've never met before and we sit with someone else. It's the fundamental building block of democracy, this ability to talk to each other and see each other and hear each other. That's what a day without hate is doing. In 2013, Peace Jam chose Day Without Hate for the Global Call to Action Award, an honor given by 15 Nobel Peace Laureates, which proves you're never too small to make a difference. Students are waking up, they're understanding their power, and the parents and the teachers and everyone else is understanding they can implement it as well. That's what I love. Schools, businesses, everybody's included. And um, yeah, if we actually do this together, then we can change the world.